Hey everyone, it's Dustin the Pro Picker here. I'm here with a thrift store video for you guys. And so I was actually down the road at the bin sale yesterday and on the way back decided I was going to make a swing into the American thrift store here. And I am definitely glad I did. If you haven't already, guys, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. Let's get into this. So... I end up finding quite a bit here, and I am going to put up comps and discuss things with you and my reasoning right now, but stay around until the end of the video, and I'm going to share with you a full breakdown on what I expect to make off of everything that I purchased today. That was a generic PS3 controller. For those that have seen my negative feedback, or excuse me, I got banned on eBay video, you'll see why I don't pick those up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, even though I was able to become unbanned from eBay, there were some unexpected consequences from that that I think I'm going to uh, discuss in a video segment in the future as well. So, I just won't deal in generic Sony controllers anymore at all at this point. Now, looking around here, the uh, first thing I saw was that food processor, but I'm just kind of trying to get a whole uh, glance at everything in the store. This HP Envy printer looks kind of unique and uh, the all-in-one and everything. However, there wasn't a ton of value to it. And without the power cord, I just decided to pass on it. And I did see this Bose. It's like a power switching supply. And these things go for about 20 bucks. So at $250, uh, buy cost, $20 shipped. It's only going to be 5 to ship. I mean, I probably will make $10, like $10 profit uh, on that, so not too bad. And the Sony PS2 controller, I probably could have grabbed. Uh, it was missing the like rubber pieces on the analog stick, so at the time, I just didn't feel like messing with it. This is a Cuisinart DC, DLC 10, excuse me, and they go for around $80 complete. It's missing the blades. I'll probably part it out, but I'm, I do have some parts that I could put with it, blades and everything, the uh, tamper and whatnot. I do test the motor. The motor works, and I do decide to get this because you can always part this guy out here. Um, the, the container, the lid chute, the motor, they all go for money, so... Either way, it's a win-win for it's a it's a winning situation for me, I guess. Not a win-win. The Krups here, I'm mainly getting because that carafe goes for forty-five dollars, guys, and the Throffer and a few other pieces can be parted out as well. Completely buying that with the intention to part it out for eight dollars. Um, totally worth it. It's missing the place where you put the espresso. Um, rolling down here, this is going pretty quick because I just find stuff in rapid succession. I see not one, but two New Wave ovens. And uh, these are a good bread and butter item for anybody that likes to deal in a countertop appliances. I mean, they would retail roughly a hundred piece. I know the a hundred dollars a piece. I know the accessories here and everything included are different, but I'm just throwing up some random parts to show you that how well these part out. You can always just sell the motor, the domes, the extensions. Um, all of the just parts out so easily. So I'm going to see if they work. I like to sell them as whole units, but if not, I'll go ahead and uh, part them out. Um, the ice cream maker there, not the one on the other side of the rival is a Cuisinart one. I only sell those if they're brand new. I've uh, recently just sold a brand new in box one. Used, they don't send to hold enough value for me to be interested in dealing with. That's the thing. It's all about having enough value to make worth shipping when it comes to uh, these bigger items. And it's really just a math problem at the end of the day. I am going to touch on the free shipping model that I utilize today. However, I really feel that um, I would need a full video to really flesh that out. So I'll touch on that at the end um, briefly. And... Continuing on here, just kind of looking around, um, already found more than I expected in one stop. I see this Wolfgang Puck Bistro. I've had another one of these. It's the model I'm showing on the screen. That's uh, different than this one. 
but they, they share a lot of similarities. So I, I do end up picking this guy up for $8 because I can part it out very similar to the other unit or sell it as a, a whole unit because it does have everything here, blades included. So I do end up grabbing that $8, really can't complain there. Now I find these ceiling fans and they're brand new open box and I decide that, you know, I'm going to check them out, of course, because brand new open box stuff. Um, these, how I'm going to ship them is I'm going to just stick a label on it, just kind of like a store would, honestly, because <laughs> that's what they do. Um, this one comps out at 150 brand new, but I'm competing against open box listings at about 139.99. So I'm probably going to come in at 130 on this one. And the cost on this one, I believe, is $10. And as you see, I'm like, where the heck do I put this in my cart? And very infrequently do I have to do this. However, I go ahead and grab a second cart here and pull it on over. And I do want to get this other one, but I have to check the insides of it first. Of course, if I were not to purchase it, I would have brought it up to the front so they could retape it. And looking through here, um, this one, yeah, definitely open box as well. And just kind of making sure everything's in there. That's kind of a big deal with uh, anything open box you see at the thrift store, bin sales, whatever. You do want to check the contents of it because... You know, you want to get what you're paying for, right? Uh, 10 bucks on this one. I'm going to go ahead and grab it as well. And that's the airdrop one. I, sh I see a sold around $100 shipped on that one. So not too bad to be $10 into it. And then this is the uh, level ceiling fan. Now, a brand new one uh, sold for 166 then an open box sold for 100 that was white. The only one that I'm competing against is a brand new one for 166 So I think what I'm going to do is come in around 120 $129.99 and uh, see if I can get that. And quickly, um, I saw these component cables for the Wii. So they're actually worth like 35 bucks, guys. And the reason is the Wii was packed in with AV cables or uh, I guess uh, RCA cables, which is only the three prawn. This is five prawn. And essentially just to make it really basic, um, there's no HDMI on the Wii. So these cables will give you a better picture and the highest quality that you can get. So people were, you know, they weren't packed in with the system. There's less of them that were made. People are willing to pay for those. So $2 is a total buy on those because they're just going to ship in a uh, bubble mailer that I'm just going to toss them into. And it's going to be an easy sale for me. Halloween's coming up and I've been stocking up on costumes, guys. This is um, a Minions Bob costume and it's at $5.00. It'll probably ship priority. I'll probably put it in a poly bag, though, or maybe have to put two poly bags around it. Uh, she shows me this other costume, and it's actually a giant Dalmatian. I made a joke about how I should wear it in next time, right? And <laughs> I do end up grabbing it. There's no comps for this specific one, but I find those, like, the goofier costumes like that um, tend to sell pretty well. I put in my estimate $30 on it, but I'm going to probably ask $39.99 for it um, when we list it, since we're going into the season for it. This is, uh, as you can see, I'm on cart number three now. I find this Ninja Carafe here, and it's got $3 on it here, and I just bought this, uh, you know, on Instinct. I'm seeing comps running from... 45 to 55 on it so that's pretty awesome i mean you know if somebody breaks their craft loses it somehow or whatever uh, you know this radica here now this guy's a dollar 50 i've sold this before i bought one for probably around that same price at a an estate sale and it sold really quick for me i believe i'll get somewhere in the range of 35 to 50 for it it's the big screen solitaire and it's just a very popular uh Radica that uh, sells for very good money. If you ever see one in new condition, I'm sure it sells for crazy, crazy money. And uh, here I am just kind of showing you everything I picked up today. Uh, quite a bit of 
merchandise indeed. I ended up spending a total of $96.75, so nearly $100 on everything. And of course, uh, in this instance, I have these like two and a quarter card or whatever. So I decided that I'm going to pull up my car and uh, load it that way. And I go here and I just kind of wanted to bring up a little bit of a reality of resale. So a lot of people are like, oh, you ripped people off at this garage sale. There's a lot of work that goes into flipping. And one of it is moving all this stuff around. Um, there's some spoilers on some bin sale stuff and some stuff you've already seen me buy because I really need to clean out my Kia, which I'm actually doing after this uh, video. Uh, we're listing some stuff to make room for it, to bring it inside uh, right now, actually. And then uh, we're going to get it all inside. Um, but yeah, uh, just wanted to show you, you know, it's not just like you buy something and it instantly turns into money, which uh, a few people, I guess, seem to think that that's how that works. And, uh, you know, having an eBay business, just like any business or any job is real work and does take some effort. And with that, let's get into the recap. All right, everyone. So I think that was a pretty amazing trip to the American thrift. I would have to say that was one of my better trips there. Um, in fact, probably one of my better thrifting trips lately, just because, uh, I'm, I won't say thrifting's gone dry, but... It has slowed down some. I've been really on trying to be on point with making sure I still check all the thrift stores while I'm hitting these yard sales and bin sales and flea markets that I've been doing just to make sure I don't miss out on anything like this. And I'm definitely glad I made the decision to stop in uh, yesterday because I found quite a bit of inventory there. And I think I'm going to make a pretty decent buck on it. So I guess a few disclaimers here before I get into the breakdown on the numbers. So this is an estimate. These are what I'm hoping to get. Not necessarily what I will, but they are based in reality by being based on actual sold comps on eBay. Some of these numbers could fluctuate up or down based on if I decide to part out an individual item or if I want to take the easier route of just selling the whole thing outright. Uh, such as what it comes to as countertop appliances there. And that's just going to depend uh, based on what works and what doesn't and what parts I already have on hand to complete setups. So that's one. And then two, um, I'm going to break everything down by list price as a free shipping model. And then sh I'll deduct shipping as an expense to come as part of the way that I come to the net pre-tax return is what I'm going to call it. So what that means is I do operate on a free shipping model. And one of the things I'll hear the most from people that uh, don't really understand the free shipping model is that I need to charge shipping. Well, my free shipping model, it, it, it's not unique to me, is that I will add the shipping and bake it into my cost. So if something is $30 plus $10 shipping, $39.99 free shipping. And what do I gain from that? Well, first off, uh, quickly, it's a customer expectation to get free shipping these days. People are more likely to buy a product that's the same price that says free shipping on it. It's just how it works. It's just how it is. Amazon set that standard and it has rocked the world and it is everywhere. That's just how it is online nowadays. I'm not saying that you... Have, before I continue this, I'm not saying that you're wrong or anything for going with a, uh, a shipping model. There's some very successful resellers and some very successful reselling YouTubers that do that too. And uh, that's their prerogative. But I think that uh, personally for me, what works is free shipping. And what I would suggest to somebody that does a fair amount of volume and can take occasional ebbs and flows in... Uh, getting hit on shipping and gaining, um, I would suggest for most people that have a fair amount of volume to go free. Benefit beyond customer expectation is the algorithm boost that you do get with going with the free shipping model. You will show up higher in search results going free shipping versus not going free shipping. All right, so with all that being said, 
we're going to get into everything here. So our total list for everything that I bought today comes out to be $1,011.88. And of course, remember all estimates here. Cost of goods, not an estimate. $96.75. And my estimated shipping, remember we're doing free shipping listings, is going to be a subtraction of $240.20. I do estimate packing supplies in there uh, and roughly uh, when I do that. And fees, going to be an estimated $131.44. So this is a total pre-tax estimate return of $542.69 for that run. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. Any any day that you can make that is awesome, let, uh, you know, on your buying, let alone on a single thrift store run. And I think what I like about this is that it's all everyday items. So a lot of times, you know, you'll see on my channel and others, um, you know, grail finds and like, look at this amazing video game, a lot of stuff from 25 years ago that just, you know, happened to be their personal collection and they're willing to get rid of it right now. And that, that's awesome. And you definitely want to go after that kind of stuff. But this just proves the fact that you can go into a thrift store, you can go to garage sales, and you can just buy everyday items that people had on their kitchen countertops for years. And they, they've been sitting in the garage after that for years uh, afterwards. And they make it to a thrift shop or their garage sale themselves. And uh, you're able to pick it up and flip it for a buck. And uh, I think that's a good lesson to take from this, that, you know, just kind of everyday things that people want and uh, want to be able to use and uh, have in their lives uh, can make you some money. And uh, yeah, so with that, guys, I want to thank everybody for coming out and watching today. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, this video is coming out on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. So I do hope, um, you know, everybody's dealing with that well and everything. Um, you know, obviously, we lost uh, 3,000 individuals from that and uh, quite uh, quite a bit of individuals as well and uh, the resulting conflicts. And I know we all have our story of where we were and how it changed it and affected our lives. Um, mine is just, you know, the same as a lot of people who... Uh, that factored in heavily into making the decision to uh, join the military. Uh, I was 16 when 9-11 occurred, um, a junior in high school. So, you know, I had one more year left of high school after that. And, yeah, it definitely uh, affected the trajectory of my life and uh, of countless others. Um, with that, guys, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate the support. I'm going out to the flea market tomorrow. Um, I have some bin sale footage, so there's so much stuff I do want to share with you guys. And I have some other ideas for videos as well. Um, eventually, a palette is going to be in the cards. It's just right now really chaotic and everything. Um, so, again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the uh, like button. Follow me on Instagram. It's at ProPickerOhio. And uh, comment down below something about today's video that you found interesting. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.